The musculoskeletal system is large, anatomically complex, and potentially daunting in terms of clinical assessment. A simple and quick method to screen for abnormality in the system is therefore useful. The GALS is such a screen. GALS stands for gait, arms, legs, and spine. GALS is a validated screening tool with good sensitivity for detecting musculoskeletal abnormality. It is not completely specific for muscles and joints and can detect problems in other systems, especially neurological disease. Importantly, a patient's performance on the GALS correlates well with their ability to perform activities of daily living, such as dressing, feeding and toileting. The GALS is therefore an objective screen, both for locomotor abnormality and functional disability. The musculoskeletal system is built to move. The GALS screen assumes that if muscles and joints look normal and move normally, then they are normal. The movements that are included in the GALS are mainly those that first become painful or restricted by joint disease. These are the so-called tight pack positions for each joint when the capsule is at its tightest. Other movements are included mainly because of their functional importance. We will now look at the GALS screen being performed on a normal person. The individual components of the screen will then be examined and explained. Have you any pain or stiffness in your muscles, joints, neck or back? No. Can you dress yourself completely without any difficulty? Yes. And can you walk up and down stairs without any difficulty? Yes. Okay, can I ask you to stand here, walk towards the wall, turn around and come back? Okay, now can you turn and face the wall? I'm just going to press some of the muscles over your shoulders. Let me know if there's any discomfort at any point. No. No. Okay, now can you turn to the side, please? Can you bend forward from the hip and try and touch your toes? I'm going to place my fingers on your back. And can you straighten up, please? Okay, now turn and face me. I'm going to ask you to do a few simple movements. Can you tilt your head so that your ear approaches your shoulder? Same on the other side. Okay. Open your mouth wide and move your jaw from side to side. Okay. Now place your hands behind your head and push your elbows right back. And then bring your arms down like this. Okay. Now keeping your elbows tucked in, bring your hands out in front of you, palms down. And turn your hands over. Squeeze my fingers tight and release. Now on this hand, can you touch the tips of your fingers with your thumb? And same on that hand. Now hold your hands out. I'm going to squeeze. Tell me if this hurts. No. How about this? No. Okay, now can you pop onto the couch, please? Are you comfortable? Yes. I'm going to examine your legs. Let me know if there's any discomfort at any point. Can you bring your ankle up towards your bottom? Same thing on this leg. Bring your ankle up towards your bottom. I'm just going to squeeze your feet now. Tell me if this hurts. No. And how about this? No. Okay. That's fine. Thank you very much. Having viewed the gals, now let's go back over the screen to explain its various parts. 
Have you any pain or stiffness in your muscles, joints, neck or back? No. Pain and stiffness are the most common presenting symptoms of musculoskeletal disease. The neck and back are worth specifying, since most people consider the spine as separate from muscles and joints. Can you dress yourself completely without any difficulty? Yes. Dressing is a sensitive screen of arm, leg and spine function. It is also an important activity of daily living. And can you walk up and down stairs without any difficulty? Yes. Walking, again, is a sensitive test of lower limb function and an important daily activity. If you can walk up and down stairs without difficulty, you will certainly be able to walk easily on a flat surface. And this does not need to be asked. OK, can I ask you to stand here, walk towards the wall, turn around and come back? All movements of gait should be smooth and symmetrical, including arm swing, pelvic tilt and stride length. Observe ability to turn quickly in the absence of back, hip or knee disease. OK, now can you turn and face the wall? From behind, Inspect for symmetry and bulk of shoulder girdle and paraspinal muscles. A straight spine without scoliosis. Level iliac crests. Gluteal muscle bulk and symmetry. Any popliteal swellings. Calf muscle bulk and symmetry. Distinct Achilles tendons. And any hind foot swelling or deformity. I'm just going to press some of the muscles over your shoulders. Let me know if there's any discomfort at any point. Press firmly over each mid supraspinatus muscle belly and squeeze the skin over each trapezius. This can be uncomfortable in normal subjects, but produces an exaggerated hyperalgesic withdrawal response in the common condition fibromyalgia. From the side, inspect for normal cervical lordosis, mild thoracic kyphosis, lumbar lordosis, absence of any hip or knee flexion deformity, and no knee hyperextension. Can you bend forward from the hip and try and touch your toes? Bending forward tests both hip and lumbar spine flexion. To confirm significant lumbar flexion, place two or three fingers over the lumbar spinous processes. As a subject extends, the fingers will come together. I'm going to ask you to do a few simple movements. Can you tilt your head so that your ear approaches your shoulder? Lateral cervical flexion is the first effect of movement in common neck pain syndromes. Open your mouth wide and move your jaw from side to side. This fully stresses both temporomandibular joints. Now place your hands behind your head and push your elbows right back. This requires full shoulder abduction and external rotation, the tight pack position for glenohumeral joints. The commonly strained superior and posterior elements of the rotator cuff are used for this movement. Elbow flexion and movements at the sternoclavicular and acromioclavicular joints are also tested. Importantly, we now know that the patient can get their hands to their head for feeding, washing and grooming. And then bring your arms down like this. In the anatomical position, inspect for normal bulk and symmetry of the deltoids full elbow extension on each side, normal bulk and symmetry of the quadriceps muscles, any knee swelling, varus bow-legged or valgus not need, normal foot arches, and any midfoot or forefoot deformity. Now keeping your elbows tucked in, bring your hands out in front of you, palms down, and turn your hands over. Squeeze my fingers tight and release. Now on this hand, can you touch the tips of your fingers with your thumb? And same on that hand. 
Now hold your hands out. I'm going to squeeze. Tell me if this hurts. No. How about this? No. Inspect for swelling and deformity of wrists and hands and ability to extend the fingers. Supination tests the proximal and distal radio ulnar joints. Inspect the palms for muscle bulk and other visible abnormality. Power grip tests the wrist and hand joints and is important for many daily activities. Squeezing the examiner's fingers assesses strength. Fine precision pinch tests hand joint movement, coordination and concentration, and again is important for activities of daily living, such as dressing. Squeezing the metacarpal phalangeal joints for tenderness screens for inflammatory rheumatoid arthritis, which targets these joints. Be sure to watch the patient's face for non-verbal signs of discomfort. Can you pop onto the couch, please? Are you comfortable? Yes. I'm going to examine your legs. Let me know if there's any discomfort at any point. Ensure that the knee flexes fully without coarse crepitus or grating. Internal rotation of the hip in flexion is the first movement to become painful or restricted with hip arthritis. If a knee effusion is present, the hand pressing the suprapatella pouch will be ballooned outwards as the patella is pressed down. I'm just going to squeeze your feet now. Tell me if this hurts. No. Squeezing the metatarsophalangeal joints for tenderness again screens small joints that are targeted by rheumatoid arthritis. Finally, inspect the soles for any deformities, swelling and callus, which indicate abnormal load bearing during walking. The following illustrates examples of abnormalities that will be detected by the gals using observation of gait as an example. Walking is a specific movement that tests multiple regions of the body. The main phases of gait are heel strike, loading or stance phase, toe off, swing through. Although we all have an individually recognisable style of walking, a normal gait is characterised by flowing arm movement linked to movement of the opposite leg, smooth symmetrical movement of the pelvis rotating forward with the advancing leg, hip flexion at heel strike, hip extension at toe off, knee extension at heel strike, flexion during swing through, normal heel strike, foot pronation in mid stance, heel rise before push off and ankle dorsiflexion during swing and smooth turning ability. A common gait abnormality is an antalgic gait. Note the jerky asymmetry of gait where the patient spends less time weight bearing on a painful limb because of a painful foot, knee, hip or back. This patient has a wide-based, short-stepped, irregular and unsteady ataxic gait due to peripheral sensory loss, in which case closing the eyes worsens the unsteadiness, or cerebellar disease, which is unaffected by closing the eyes. Having undertaken the GAL screen, the findings can be recorded using a simple template as seen here. The record for the person examined shows that their gait is normal, the arms, legs and spine look normal and all move through the tested ranges without any pain or restriction. In this patient, however, the GAL screen picked up a number of abnormalities they have an asymmetric antalgic gait, spending less time weight-bearing on their right leg. The right knee has a varus deformity, reduced flexion and palpable crepitus. With doing no more than this in the GAL screen, it is now possible to suggest the most likely diagnosis as osteoarthritis of the knee.
musculoskeletal disorders are prevalent, especially in the middle-aged and elderly. We have seen that the GAL screen is quick and easy to perform. It will detect important locomotor abnormality, give an objective assessment of functional disability, often on its own provide sufficient information for diagnosis and form the foundation on which to build more detailed examinations.